authentic conversations with wedding professionals as they share their stories, insights, and tips from inside the wedding industry. We'll chat about how to be authentic and that it's okay not to be perfect or run your business like someone else's Instagram. Let's dive into the privilege it is to serve our clients and discover the talented creatives that make up our community. When we share what we know and who we are, we better serve our couples as a wedding day team, as well as each other. Simply put, be Fabo. Now here's your host, Bobby Brinkman. Hey, welcome back to the podcast, Fabo listeners. Thanks for uh, joining us today. This is episode 24. Episode 24 is going to be a solo podcast. That means there's no guest. You just get to listen to me. And uh, I want to thank you in advance for doing so. Um, one of the things that I think is lovely and extra fabo is that y'all actually DM me and uh, text me and uh, let me know topics that you want to hear, um, guests that you would like to hear from. And uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted to start this podcast was I so I could bring topics that uh, many of us everyday creative entrepreneurs deal with Monday through Friday and then bring some experts in on some things that can help us deal with uh, the weekend weddings. Um, but there's so many um, wonderful wedding heroes uh, out there that uh, work every weekend that have a couple hundred Instagram followers to thousands and thousands and millions of Instagram followers. And those are the stories that I wanted to bring. So I love the fact that y'all will send me in somebody that I haven't heard of or somebody that inspires you. And then I'm interested to go find out about them and research and then bring them on the show. So keep doing that. But I also knew that we needed to talk to some, as we say in the industry, rock star people, um, just to get their take on it. Um, I love that most of us are in the trenches every weekend. I'm along with you guys every weekend and sometimes the week, uh, still photographing weddings after all these years. So you know, I practice what I preach and I try to do what I say I'm doing. Um, so I love having that along. But the other thing that strikes me is that you guys actually wanted to hear from me. Um, and I'm very flattered at that, especially now being June. I mean, come on, it's the middle of June. Can you believe how fast June has flown by? 2019 is poof, almost gone. So I know that a lot of us, um, in the, uh, depending on where you are in the industry, um, are either starting your wedding season, um, or slowly ending your wedding season. Um, I know Midwest is picking up for summer weddings here in the South. I've already done my 23 weddings for the spring, so I can take off all of July, so I can be fully present with some family and friends. It's just too darn hot, and in this destination market, it is extremely crowded with tourists. So I'm very blessed that I'm able to have wonderful fabulous couples the first part of the year, so I can take off July and then have the great, great fabulous couples at the end of July. June is also Pride Month, and I think that's what uh, what thrilled me is that so many of you wrote in and asked if I was going to be doing a Pride episode uh, on the podcast. And to be honest with you, I wasn't going to. Um, I have some amazing interviews coming up of some industry leaders that are doing wonderful things in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I just didn't schedule them for June. Um, I'm interviewing them in a couple weeks and throughout the year. And part of the reason I think I didn't specify a Pride episode episode solely by itself was that here at BBP and in my personal life, I celebrate pride every day. Um, I believe that everybody's love story needs to be told. I believe that everybody deserves to be heard. Um, I believe that it is a privilege and honor to capture all couples love stories. And and I want to be clear here um, when I talk about inclusion and diversity that, you know, we just can't be LGBTQ plus allies. We need to be vendors that accept same sex couples, African American couples, Indian couples, mixed race couples, and a variety of faith based religious background um, couples. So I want to be sure that even though it's Pride Month and we're talking about LGBTQ plus, there's still a lot of work to be done in the other areas of uh, diversity and acceptance. But Pride to me isn't just about waving the rainbow flag or having a parade or celebrating with friends. It really is about the struggles that occurred now 50 years ago. Uh, This is the anniversary of Stonewall 50. Um, I encourage all of you, um, even those of you that are very well-known and well-versed in the LGBTQ 
LGBTQ community. Um, there's a lot of documentaries on this month. Netflix, Hulu, Prime, all are showing Stonewall 50 mainstream TV. Um, there's wonderful movies out there. The, bland, the band played on A Normal Heart that really dive into um, some of the things that affect the gay community. Um, so Pride to me is celebrating those that began to fight hard for equal rights for our community. Um, they were beaten and pulled out of the bars in Stonewall and you know, rocks thrown at them, spit on, name called. All those things 50 years ago some gave their lives for battling hard and then they finally got tired of it and started standing up and marching that's what pride is to me it is to celebrate all those people and all those shoulders that I stand on um they're where we got us today to where we have fought and won for marriage equality just four short years ago it took all those years to just four short years ago pass marriage equality so pride to me is not about, it's not a gay issue. It's not a straight issue. It's about coming together for human rights. And it is about celebrating and respecting those who had the courage to take to the streets and use their voices and uh, make some wonderful rainbow signs and rainbow flags and came up with the rainbow flag to show that we're all in this community and we need to be heard and women in particular need to be heard and gay men need to be heard and so pride to me is celebrating those people and supporting those people and continuing to fight um i'm in my mid 50s and it's it's no uh, secret that i'm an uh, older uh, veteran in the wedding industry and uh when i was in high school towards the end of high school the aids epidemic um started and uh those were some rough years in the early, you know, late eighties, early nineties. Um, I was at an age where, you know, I attended many, many funerals of some really good friends who passed away from this horrible, horrible disease. And I remember we still celebrated their lives and marriage was so far from our, our thinking at that time. It was more about how can we all stay safe and we don't want to attend any more funerals. And we still were fighting. Pride is part of that fight pride and the community and the battles were the ones that led the way to really um put a face to this gay disease hiv and uh let it not just be known in the gay community so pride to me is my 55 years of doing what i can do and the older that i got and the older that i get my voice becomes a little quieter maybe but uh as all of you that know me know, I speak my truth and I stand in my truth. And um, while I have a lot to learn on the podcast and in life in general, um, I'm authentically Bobby. You get the good, the bad, the uh, happy, the sad, the uh, sometimes silly, and the sometimes very serious. Um, but you get me, a 100%. Um, I give 100% to everything that I do and to everybody that I meet. And so at BBP, we celebrate pride and we celebrate everybody and we celebrate diversity and we believe kindness matters overall and that everybody deserves to be treated equally. So I wasn't sure that if I just talked about pride um, in the wedding industry, if I was going to talk about how to get more sales or how to attract more couples or how to let others know that we needed same sex. You know, full disclosure, I am a wedding educator and I do have these topics available. Um, I'm getting ready to come up next week. Actually, the day this podcast airs, I'll be uh, sharing LGBTQ plus and how to better serve those couples uh, with the Golden Isles Wedding Association um, over at the Weston. So um, I'm always happy to come and talk and teach and share what I know and to share my experiences. Um, and so if you need more information about that, you can visit bobbybrinkphotography.com, click my education site to get more information on topics and how you can um, have me come out and talk to your group or your conference. So shameless plug there. But I decided it is time that maybe we talk a little bit, not so much about the engaged couples, but maybe we talk about what it's like to actually be a gay vendor working in the wedding industry. And folks, it is not an easy industry to be gay in. Um, let me just put it to you that way. Um, life's hard being a gay individual. Um, every day you deal with 
struggles. You deal with hatred. You deal with name calling. But you also deal with pats on the backs. Thanks for standing up for us. Thanks for your voice. Um, I'm at the age where the younger generation does thank us and does come up and say, hey, thanks for all the battles and everything you keep doing. Um, I think I live a life that's really authentic and I, I live a life that's out there. And so I'm easily approached by young gay couples that want to come and talk to me. And uh, I love when they come and talk to me. I'm an open book. Um, it does get better. I always tell them that. But in the wedding industry, I still see so many wedding vendors in the closet. And I use that term because it's a term that most of us know in the gay community. And I have to sit and wonder why. And the answer is, I know the answer. Um, and I maybe, if I did a Pride podcast episode, I might be able to enlighten some other fellow vendors and even engage couples. So how many, how many of you, if you sat down, could actually say you know a gay vendor in the wedding industry? Um, words hurt. Words are harmful. And you can still sit in a room and hear somebody gay bash or african-american bash or do a religious bash and do you really know the people that are sitting in the room with you um we all call our weekend wedding family our family that we spend more times with uh, the wedding industry people on the weekends than we do our own family so do you really know that vendor um do you want to know that vendor um sometimes it's easy just to assume that they're probably just a straight person working in this industry and again, this is a hard industry to work in. We're in an industry that is all about love and celebrating and happy times. Um, but are we really joining forces and welcoming other gay vendors in our own industry and in our own community? Um, here in the South, it is still very hard to even, you know, even be afraid to say you're a same-sex couple. It's uh, you're still afraid to maybe even say you're a mixed-race couple. I mean, it just happened to us last week on our um, email. We got an email off our website, and the couple was like, "Hey, thank heaven I see mixed-race couples on your website. We're a mixed-race couple, and I've been looking at websites, and your name kept coming up. But as we were researching, we were looking at other venues and florists and photographers, and we finally." got down to you and you're one of the few people that show mixed race couples uh, on your website so that made us feel very very welcoming and safe but there's more to the story um so here in the south wedding vendors are sometimes still in that bubble of how the south is and i'm not just blaming the south i mean it's uh, it's all over but obviously um, being gay in the wedding industry in San Francisco or Chicago or New York might be a little easier. It's still stressful, but uh, it might be a little bit easier because just in volumes of people, there seems to be more gay people in those areas. So you're going to know more gay people that are working in the industry. I mean, I'm sure we all know the stereotype that, you know, there's always a gay wedding planner. There's always a gay florist. <clears throat> and we always thrilled because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, nobody can do it like the gays. Look how wonderful the uh, the gay people florists can decorate or look how wonderful these gay men can plan these amazing, amazing weddings. And all those things are true. But is it because they're gay? Is it just because they're creative and they're talented? Um, we don't often single out the straight florist who did an amazing fabo job, but we seem to always say, oh man, that gay florist, of course it was fabulous. Um, so that needs to change. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that based on some of your questions that uh, came in. But I really want you guys to sit back for a little bit. And I want you to think, you know, do you really understand what we go through? Um, not only do we have to have a couple trust us, but then we also have to have vendors trust us. And, you know, again, full disclosure, candid conversation, as this podcast always is. How do you know that the vendors want to work with you? How do we know that the vendors are going to be accepting of us? Um, I guess it's really easy. I know it's really easy, so I should take the guess out of that. For vendors to work with us to our face and then say really nasty things behind our back, that has nothing to do with being gay. That's just sadly life in general and how people treat people. Again, sadness in our, in our culture. But how do you know? Um, when you, when you get this great couple and man, you just, you really like these vendors and you know, they're very talented. Um, but you get a straight couple and you take the straight couple to that 
other vendor that you want to work with and they're all, oh my gosh, that's great. And then the minute you want to take them to a gay couple, you see a different, uh, a different side of them. And right off the bat, I need to feel that you must feel that way about me or any other gay vendor. And I think that's really, really hard. Um, a lot of us got really thick skin. We've been around the block a few times. Um, so we've gotten used to hiding our feelings or hiding who we are. And, um, I've never really hid who I am. Um, I'm pretty much open book. Um, if you ask me, I'll tell you, if you don't ask me, you're probably going to figure it out. But it's when we sit down to go and work with fellow vendors, I, I really want everybody to pause for a minute and think, do I treat them differently? Um, or am, am I accepting of their lifestyle? Not just when they work with us, but am I accepting of the lifestyle? Do I get to know their partners? Do I get to know their families? And, and in full disclosure, I'm going to tell you that there's still some gay vendors who are very much in the closet and don't want you to know about their partners or their spouses, um, or if they've adopted a kids or they have dogs. Um, some people just want you to know them as X, Y, Z florist. Um, and that's great. Um, being a lesbian photographer is so far down on the list of how people describe me and how I describe myself that it never really comes up. It's all the other attributes and you know adjectives that are used to describe me. Lesbian is so far down on the list. And for that, I am grateful that that is not the first thing people say about me. So what I want you guys to do as wedding professionals is not always be so concerned about how to attract a same-sex couple and what you can do to work with same-sex couples. But I want to challenge you to how to be better and respectful wedding pros to your fellow gay wedding pros. Because um, there's a lot of us. Um, again, I know many of us know planners and florists, but I bet you don't know a lot of photographers. Um, I don't look through my camera any differently at a gay couple than I do as a straight couple. I'm telling the story. No matter who you love or the gender that you are, you get to the wedding panty process the same way. Somebody has asked you to marry them and you are going to do so. Now the struggle to get to being married, that's a whole different story. And those are things that as wedding pros, we need to start understanding in the gay um, community. You can't just pick up your piece of paper and go down your questionnaire and expect a gay couple to be able to respond, react, or have any idea of what you're talking about, especially ones that have been, again, in the closet for a long time and have been afraid to even say they're in a relationship. Um, I want to clarify that, especially here in Georgia, um, and I know we have a lot of listeners in Georgia, but here in the state of Georgia and some other states, we can legally get married. That is a federal law. So you can go on Saturday and uh, legally get married and have a big celebration, post on Sunday, I'm now Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, and then on Monday be terminated because you're gay. So we have a long way to go on that. But this is a wedding uh, podcast, so we're going to stick to the wedding issues. Um, it's never my intent to go all political, um, to challenge anybody, but I would love to have conversations about the things that we need to improve. And it is often... Uh, misinformation that, hey, you guys are legally, you can marry, everything else is there, everything else is legal, and that's not the case. Imagine if you were a straight couple, and you posted on Saturday your lovely wedding, and then you had your wedding on Saturday, and then you posted on Sunday. The worst that might happen to you on Monday is that your office people are like, hey, you didn't invite me to the wedding. Imagine knowing you're going to get a pink slip, and that everything you just did because you earn the right to be married and you wanted to be treated like every other couple, you're now not treated like every other couple because now you're terminated. Or you're getting ready to go buy that house, but first you have to rent. You can still be discriminated against and not uh, offered a place to stay if you want to rent. Married or not, that's still something that happens. So I want to talk to wedding vendors and across everybody listens and I want to applaud you for putting up the rainbow flag I want to applaud all of you for taking your brand and turning it rainbow but I want you to think about are you living that the other 11 months of the year are you really 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 this inclusive are you really really this accepting or are you just doing it because right now you think it's the right thing to do um, pride needs to be 12 months 
Pride needs to be all year. Equality needs to be all year. Kindness needs to be all year, every day. And as I mentioned before, here at BBP, we celebrate pride and kindness. 365-247. Um, it's just who we are, and uh, we really try to live by example. And we're very accepting. So that's the part about the wedding industry. Y'all need to remember that uh, we all want to work with you, and we hope that you want to work with us. But I, I want everybody to be just a little more caring sometimes before you spout off something that might be offensive um, or before you say something that might be taken as a negative. Remember, we're in the room with you. And I always say, if you want to have a different conversation, change the table or invite somebody else to the table. And I'm always open for a conversation. I'm always open on how we can make the wedding industry better for all of us, um, more inclusive so that all couples can see themselves in our industry. Every single couple, regardless of gender, race, or religion, need to see themselves represented in wedding blogs and wedding publications and on your individual websites. And if you do not want to support us and you do not want to be part of the community, you know what? That is your own decision and that obviously is your own right. But try to be a little more graceful about letting us down you can simply say no you're booked you don't need to go into i don't like gay people i don't want to work with gay people simply let others know that you're booked that is a whole other conversation i'm probably one of the few gay people that especially in the wedding industry that that i often take the side of the vendor because as a gay woman and somebody in the industry but if i was not in this industry i can tell you for a fact that unless i went to the bakery and I have tasted their cakes. I would not walk into a bakery, say, do you make wedding cakes? Oh, and by the way, it's, I'm gay. That is a hard challenge for me. Um, I think sometimes we fight and we have to keep fighting and we have to fight, fight, fight. I get it. But also sometimes those people have their rights too. Um, I don't believe in falling behind the religious flag or the religious banner that is making it okay to say no to us. I just want you to say no if you don't want to do it. That is your right as a business owner. Don't use the religious part of it. Just say no. Um, so I, I often get annoyed that uh, we in the gay community want to push some people sometimes just to bake a damn cake. Um, gay people know gay people in pretty much every industry. And I, and I assure you that uh, you can find somebody that wants to be a part of your wedding day. And I'm going to help you with that a little bit in a few minutes. But... I just want vendors to understand that it's it's hard for us on wedding days. It's hard for us sometimes on wedding days to sit and listen to some of the things that are said at ceremonies. A lot of you guys ask me sometimes to share some stories. So this is the perfect time for me to share one. Um, I'm originally from St. Louis, so it's uh, Catholic uh, Central there. Um, it's pretty, you know, pretty much you're going to get two or three Catholic weddings a month. In these big Catholic churches, and they all have the two o'clock masses. And needless to say, um, you know, the Catholic organization, religious organizations, powers that be, do not um, believe in homosexuality. So back then, um, when Missouri was uh, going to the ballots to legalize same sex weddings in Missouri, um, it really came into my face. Years prior, I had sat through many, many ceremonies where it was, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. And did it bother me? Sure. I mean, I stood in the back of the, you know, altar and the back of the aisle and back of the church. You know, I had my camera to my face, so I was sort of tuned out, you know, working with the camera. It, it, it makes that block. It gives me something to do, so I'm not probably thinking as much. But it hurt, and uh, it was how it was. And I can tell you when I started my career 37 years ago, I took a lot of heat from the gay community. Um, how dare you want to service people that do not allow us to get married? How dare you, Bobby, want to be a wedding photographer in an industry where we're not even legally able to get married, that everything we have to do is behind closed doors, or we're, we have to say I do, and we have to get married, and it's almost like we're apologizing for it, or it's some sacred you know, right. Or there's some, there's something crazy about it. That's why, you know, straight people don't want to know how gay weddings are. So we have to keep them under closed quarters. And then the straight community 
gave me crap <laughs> once in a while by saying, hey, I think you do great photography, but how do you, what do you, how do you know about a wedding? How, how do you know about marriage? And, and I challenge anybody on that is, hey, if you've not been married before, what makes you an expert on marriage or weddings in general as well? As wedding vendors, we hear all the time from our couples, well, I've never done this before. This is my first time. And as wedding vendors, we have to go, right, we do it every weekend, but we have to still smile and be excited. And and every time we hear, hey, we're going to walk down the aisle to a, with holding flowers and we're going to play Canon and C, we have to be excited that, hey, that's not like we do every weekend, but it's what we do every weekend. So I was getting it from both communities, the wedding industry community and the gay community. And man, it was a tough battle for a few years. Um, it was, you know, once in a while I thought, man, you know, can I do this? But I believe so much in the power of photography and the value of photography and outside the wedding world, what photography can do. Um, it is to capture moments and hold them still in everyday life. But now bring that into a wedding, into a chapter of your life where the photos that I take are going to be the first photos of your new family generation. It's your family history. As a photographer, in general, I'm the historian. No matter whether it's a wedding or a birthday party or climbing, you know, up to, you know, to look at Mount Westmore or going to the beach. My job is historian. Um, I capture the where, I capture the when, I capture the how. And you, the couple in front of my lens or the people in front of my lens are the story of why. And that story is going to be here for generations to come. And, you know, two generations from now, they're going to go, oh my gosh, where was that? And you may be able to say, hey, that used to be this wonderful island, but a hurricane came through and destroyed it. Or I here's the church I was married at and a fire has burnt it. Not to mention, they're going to say, what were you wearing? Why was your hair like that? All the things that go when we look back over generational photos. But that's my job as an historian. And in the wedding industry in particular, on that particular day, um, especially when we talk about budgets, I always hear, man, that's a lot of money or that's an investment. But I am, along with a videographer, um, cinematographer, and maybe sometimes your rings. But for the most part, the cliche is correct. When it's all over, you are only going to have your photos. Um and those photos become more priceless the moment that somebody that you love or came to celebrate in them has passed away. They become priceless. Um, that's why I believe in the power of photography. That's how I know how powerful it is. It brings people together. Um, pretty much not a day goes by that I don't get uh, somebody sending me a thank you, especially now with social media, that says, hey, thank you for this photo of my grandmother. It was the last one, uh, and I treasure it. That's why I'm a proponent for print your photos. Um, I get on those print your photo campaigns because when you're having a really, really crappy day, um, whether it's with your spouse or it's the fight that you have with your sister or your brother, or on the day that your grandmother passed away and three months later you're sitting in the kitchen and you hear her voice, you can pick up that photo and remind you of how much you were loved. And on a wedding day photo, you can remind, be reminded about the people that came and gave of their time to celebrate you. So I believe in the power of photography. I don't capture anybody's story different regardless of their race, gender, who they love, how they love, how they got there. I capture the story of their day as it unfolds. Um, I make sure I have Aunt Susie and Uncle Mark and all the little kids running around because those are people that you're going to cherish more as time goes on. Um, the rest of the wedding details all come into play as additives to your story um, and there's subtext to your story. But the people, and that's how I've always seen what I do, is I capture the people that came to celebrate you and I want those people represented in the photos. So I don't look at it through a gay camera and I don't look at it through a gay lens. Um, I'm looking at it as another human being who is privileged and honored that you asked me to document the special moments of your life at this time. The honor and privilege never, ever gets taken lightly from me. Um, I may show up when you first hire me as a stranger with a camera, but by the time I get done spending, you know, 18 months to two years with you, I am that friend with a camera. And I am very, very blessed that BBB couples still come to me 10, 15 years later. And whenever they're around, or when I say I'm in a city, we'll make an effort to have a drink or have dinner with me so we can catch up. 
And, you know, I've been doing this, as I said, for 37 years. So, yes, I have photographed couples, and I've been very blessed to come back and photograph their children. I have done all the daughters and the sons in a family. I'm the family photographer. So it doesn't matter if I was gay or straight. I'm going to tell the story the same way. Every couple's story deserves to be told. Every couple had a different path to get down to the I do, to get down the aisle, but their story still matters. Um, it's not easy for anybody. It doesn't matter, again, gender, race, religion. Life's hard. And if you're blessed and lucky enough to find somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with, then get married. And every, all gay couples want is the right to that I do and the right to the happily ever afters legally with all the same rights that come with everybody else. So I just want wedding pros that are listening in and engaged couples too, regardless if you're straight or gay, give us a little bit of grace. You know, once in a while, you got to be careful with what you say. And if you don't know something, just ask. Most of us are simply want to be available to ask or answer your questions. Most of us are, if we don't want to talk about it, we're not going to talk about it. Just like you're not going to talk about maybe the fight you had with your spouse two days ago or that your husband or wife's acting like a jerk. Same thing applies in same-sex weddings. You know, life is not always um, a bowl of cherries either, either place. So I wanted wedding pros to sit back for a few minutes and really hear that it's not easy for us. Um, we have to step out in trust and faith every day, along with the extra anxiety and the pressure that comes with the wedding, we also have to show up and hope that some new wedding vendors that we don't know won't treat us differently if they find out or won't be disrespectful if they find out. We don't want to be the asterisk on the day, somebody's day. Um, it's 2019. Um, just four years ago, it became legal. We're still at 2019, and I'm still going to tell you that while I am thrilled with marriage equality, and I think most of us in the community can tell you exactly where we were when the ruling came down. I know we were on the beach, and uh, people came running up to us. Hey, it just was announced. It just came down from Supreme Court. We got texts and phone calls, and we were thrilled for it. But both Tina and I were thrilled more for the younger generation, the new generation, the generation that is growing up with parents and grandparents and sisters and brothers who don't think anything of being gay. They all have somebody in their family being gay. They have transgenders in their family. They have people that are transitioning in their families. It's becoming so, quote, the normal that that's why I'm thrilled for future generations, that they will not have to fight this battle very hard. And we need to keep fighting to make sure that it doesn't get overturned. But marriage equality is here. And we should be thrilled that now more couples can say, I do. And yes, that means more business for all of us. Um, but there's a right way and a wrong way to go about attracting that business. We were thrilled that marriage equality meant that couples that Tina and I have had the opportunity to officiate and photograph got married celebrating their 50 years together got married celebrating their 35 years together. They didn't need a piece of paper all those years, but now that they could, they wanted to. And I'll be honest with you guys, some older couples in my generation and in, in Tina's generation, they don't need it and they didn't want to. They weren't going to go through the hassle. They knew they could and they uh, and they did. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. We had about uh, three or four couples, uh, parents actually, um, that reached out and called us and said, hey, we're so excited for you and Tina. You know, you guys have blessed so many people with by serving them as in the wedding industry as officiants and wedding photographers and just, you know, Tina running the admin side of BBP. And we're so excited that you guys can actually legally get married. I mean, we know you've already been married in Hawaii years ago and you've been together for a long time, but we're so excited that you actually get to be married. I didn't think anything of it, neither did Tina. Uh, we were married a long time ago in Hawaii when it was still legal and uh, have moved on and have a couple other wedding dates here and there along the way. But it wasn't a big deal for Tina and I. Um, but because everybody says and reminded us that, hey, because of you guys, we want to be married. We want to be that couple. We want to have a life like you and Tina have. We both felt that, hey, we owed it to the people 50 years ago that went out and marched and gave their lives. We owed it to them to go and get a marriage license. So, you know, we took an afternoon, went up to Savannah, had actually two of our couples were sitting in line to get their marriage license. And they applauded and were great. 
you know, the, the clerks are like, so you're not going to photograph yourself and marry yourself, right? And we're like, no, no, we're not even going to have a big deal. It's fine. You know, we went out, got back in the car, came back, got back in my office, started working. Didn't think twice about it. And we were on an engagement session a couple weeks later for a same-sex couple. And uh, we were talking about, you know, hey, we just went and got our marriage license. And they said, oh, my gosh, did you guys at least go celebrate or do something? And Tina says, nope. Bobby just drove right back home, went back to her office, didn't even stop and buy me a cup of coffee. You know, and I real uh, dawned on me that that's exactly how I took it. While it's a big deal, I didn't need that piece of paper. But by golly, I could have that piece of paper. And if I wanted to have a big old wedding, I could do that again legally. And nobody could stop me. But would I know what vendors to call? Even as a gay person in this industry, would I know who to call? Because if I don't know that you're a gay ally and that you're accepting of LGBTQ plus or that you're accepting of, of interracial couples or that you're accepting of African American couples, how do, how do engaged couples know? If I do not know being in this industry and part of the gay community, how do they know if I don't know? And if I don't know, I'm not going to fight hard to find out. Um, and again, you're right as a business owner. You do what you need to do, how you need to do it. I'm not here to judge. We don't judge anybody. We accept everybody. So back to some of the early weddings uh, in some of the churches. When Missouri was, was getting ready to pass this bill, I had a wonderful, wonderful couple. As a matter of fact, getting ready to see them in a couple of weeks. They're coming down to a, to a Florida um, and we're going to do some family photos. Um, I kind of see them every couple of years they, when they work their way down here for an updated family photo. So I went into the vestibule, the big area, before everybody got there. And uh, I saw some young deacons uh, setting up some tables with some big fold outs and some you know, big displays. And lo and behold, it was pamphlets saying same sex weddings are the doings of the devil. And we as a church are not going to allow marriage between uh, two women or two men. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And as a church, we need you to sign this petition. And we're going to fight all the way to Missouri, to the powers that be, and not allow. And we need everybody to support. And I realized that they were going to be passing these pamphlets out to every single wedding guest that came. Some of these people were parishioners in this church. Others were not. And this was the couple's family church. I was there probably 30 minutes before everybody else arrived. And uh, when the couple came in, when she came with the bride, came in with her mom, and they saw this, immediately they made eye contact with me. They didn't say anything, um, but they were gone for a few moments. And pretty soon here comes the priest and the priest's assistant. And they said they were not going to take them down, that they were going to keep them out, that this was their church, that we're having a couple hundred people come through here, and this was the start of the campaign. And my bride and her mother, and eventually her father, said we are not going to allow hatred to be here. And I think that's what appalls me the most. How anybody, no matter what religious or what efficient you are, you come to a ceremony, and you want to take that ceremony and turn it into a political speech. Um, I guess you have every right to do that in your church. I guess you have every right to do that when you're in the safety net or the sanctity of a church or, or, or walls or buildings. But to take a sermon, and especially if the bride and groom do not know about the sermon, and most of these, you, you know, Catholic weddings, you have to go through classes so you know what the homily and all the things going to be. But to take this time to uh, preach political points of views, it, it just, it breaks my heart, no matter who you are. But on this particular day, I remember... He was adamant about not removing these. And as guests started coming in, some guests took them. Some guests were very vocal on it. But the couple were having such a hard time with it that they were not doing a first look. The groom called me into the room and said, Bobby, I don't know what to do because I do not want to offend you. But I cannot have you standing here taking photos of us in these conditions. I'm so upset. And I mean, I could see it was generally bothering him. So much that... He went to the door and had the bride come to the other side of the door and they were deciding what they wanted to do. Here we are on their wedding day and they were literally going to not get married here 
because they felt it was offensive to me and everybody else they knew. And, you know, truth here, folks, I was not the only gay person. I was the gay, only gay vendor, but I was not the only gay person attending. Uh, there was a couple male couples and a couple uh, ladies that were there. You know, I don't know. I can't recall now if they were a couple couple or just dating or the plus ones. But they were quite appalled, too. And uh, got into a couple heated, you know, vocals. But for the most part, you know, did the polite thing and sat down and shut up. Um, knowing that this was not the place or the time to have this battle. Just as it would not be the place and time if it was at her sexual wedding and they were protesting something about insurances or they were protesting about air equality or they were protesting about travel bans. It's not the time or the place. This couple was generally moved to the point of we are not going to do this. Eventually, the dad went and talked to the priest again, and probably within 45 minutes, probably about 15, 20 minutes before they walked down the aisle, and ironically, where they were going to walk down the aisle and meet, I would have been standing there taking the photo, and these paraphernalia propagandists would have been all behind them. So they would have seen this and been reminded of it, and that's what was driving me crazy. All these years later, we all these years later, we still talk about this. When I see them in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about it. And they have used that platform at that church. They were going to leave this church, but they're a younger generation at this church, and they've made the changes at this church, and they fought hard, and they have a G, uh, LGBTQ groupings at this church, uh, and they want to make it a safe place for LGBT youth to come, and everyone feel welcomed. Um, So that's the difference straight allies can make for us. Shortly after it became legal four years ago, um, that weekend it became legal, I had already had a same-sex couple. We had two brides getting married in Savannah. They've been on the books for, you know, 11, 12 months. So we'd already got to know them, and and we were excited and thrilled. And then, lo and behold, you know, it becomes legal on that midweek day. So on Saturday, we had the Savannah newspaper that says same-sex marriage is legal, so I took the, you know, I took the token rings on that paper with that date because that is so much a part of their story now that they got married within days of it becoming legal. So that's a that's part of their story and the history and the LGBTQ plus history that uh, will go down with them. And all, you know, four years later, they still probably have that photo. It's one of the first photos they got printed because it meant something to them more than just their faces. It's part of the movement that 50 years ago, people fought for. And that is what pride is. So I'm thrilled that we had that couple to be able to celebrate and everything was great. That weekend after... We were down here in St. Simon's and we were outside. So it was an outdoor wedding. And the officiant was a pastor from the couple's church, a small church in Georgia. I'm not knocking that, but that's the fact. Small church in Georgia. He proceeded. Um, we went down the aisle. We'd done everything. Everything was great. Again, had this couple for a while. Done engagement photos, have lunch, have dinner. You know, we've, we've spent time with them. And lo and behold, the very first thing that he says was, in light of what has just happened in the Supreme Court, I'm very excited that we are here today in this lawn, in this beautiful sky that God has provided, with this beautiful backdrop that God has provided, and a man and a woman that God has determined and made and put into law is what a marriage is. Marriage is not between two men. It's not between two women. It is between a man and a woman. The Bible says homosexuality, and literally for the first time in a very, very long time, I was actually scared. Um, I made sure that I moved myself to the back of the back of the uh, outdoor area so I was behind the last row of seats so that I could really have my eyes on everybody just in case. Again, eye contact with the bride and groom. Um, I could tell they were nervous and they were worried. Uh, the parents looked at me. Um, some people got up and left and I wasn't sure why. Were they going to come back and protest? Were they getting up and leaving because they were just as appalled? And again, here it is a wonderful day of celebration of uniting two people who have fallen in love and want to take the next step legally. And somebody's going to preach, literally preach a political statement during the sermon time. 
of celebrating two people um, joining. And it was hard. Um, again, I shook for the first time in a long time. I was actually scared. And when they came down the aisle, um, I still did my job. I had a job to do. I was paid to be there. Um, when they came down the aisle, the groom reached out to me and said, Bobby, Bobby, I'm so sorry. And I put my hand up, not to, to throw him off, but to just say, hey, it's, I got things to do. And he went by me. The parents came down. Several of the bridal party came down, Bobby, Bobby. And when the dad finally came down with the, with the, the bride's mom, he pulled me over and said, Bobby, we're going to speak to him immediately. I'm so sorry. That was not part of what the sermon was going to be about. He added this all on. Again, I didn't have words at the time because I really felt that I, I needed to just stay. And like everybody else now, and, and, you know, since, you know, the last several years, we all have clauses in our contracts that state, hey, if, if you, if I feel, and if I feel it all in danger or if I feel um, approached in the wrong manner or if I feel, abuse is going to happen. I have the right to leave. And we all, we all have those things in our contracts now to protect us. But I went ahead and did my photos. And when I had to do the photo of, uh, the minister, because the minister came over and asked for a photo of the bride and groom, the bride and groom declined. And politely, they said, we already have photos of you with us in the photos of the actual ceremony. And we don't need Bobby to take those. Um, and he, he knew he could tell something was up and they wouldn't even take a cell phone photo with him. And he said to me a little bit later when we got to the reception, he wanted to come to me and start preaching to me and pretty much telling me that, you know, how could I be doing this? Um, how could I be part of this day that, that, you know, my lifestyle is the devil work. And again, here I am trying to work. And I had another vendor there, another catering company there that. Obviously did not know I was gay based on a couple of things that happened. And they were so rude to me. Um, they were going to make my job impossible. And to this day, I don't work with them. Um, and I, I, well, I want to be all inclusive and I want to include everybody. I also know that there's just some battles I'm not going to win and I'm not going to put myself or the couple in jeopardy. Um, so it's still happening. I mean, that was four years ago. You know, fast forward to just last week. If you all take a look at my website, you know, it says right there, as soon as you click on it, thanks for dropping by. Everybody's welcome here. You know, everyone, regardless of who you love, who you are, how you got here, everyone is welcome here. So we had an African-American couple reach out to me, super excited. We were available for the date in 2020. Um, also said to us, man, I'm so excited that you act, that you have done African-American weddings and I love your voice. I love everything about you. We're super excited. Um, we chatted for a little bit, like I always do with all the couples. And um, yes, and I do make sure to ask certain questions that are going to let me know and about some of their backgrounds and, and things that we have in common. And yes, like everybody else, I stalk the people as I'm chatting with them on Facebook just to make sure that we have some common ground. Um, because I think that's important in any business, regardless of what you do, you need to find a common ground with the person you're going to be exchanging a time with, especially I think during weddings it has nothing to do with me being gay and then being straight or African American. It's just sometimes our approach to weddings are different and they want something that I don't really want to do, or it's not something that I'm strong at. Most couples don't come to me for those epic, uh, over pose shots. Most couple look at my website, know my story, know that I tell a story as it unfolds and I'm all about those authentic moments. So I don't get asked those, but once in a while somebody wants to give me a list and we're not a good fit for that. But I'm sorry, I, I jumped off a little bit. But so we get the couple of contract and everything's ready to go. I'm getting ready to walk them on social media, as a matter of fact. And she sends an email. She sends a text and says, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so embarrassed to have to talk to you about this. Um, I really don't know what to do. But my mom, who is paying for the wedding, um, has realized that you are gay. And they just do not want any gay vendors at our wedding. And they don't understand how you'll be able to capture our day. That um, you won't be fully aware of what we need done. And that you won't understand how to capture us because we're not gay. And she started crying. And she says, I don't want you to leave. And I don't know what to do. But if my parents are paying for you, you can't be my photographer. And we simply don't have in the budget to hire you. So we need our parents to pay. And they're not going to. So, you know, I'm, I don't want to be their wedding photographer. I want to be their wedding photographer, but I don't want to be their wedding photographer. 
Because no matter what I do, and guys, most of you that know me know I show up and give 200%. I show up, I preach, get up, show up, put everything aside. It's like a sporting event to me. You know, put your game face on, do your game mantra, show up at the wedding, do the best, collapse when you get to the car and fall apart later. Um, and I, I have a lot of divorced uh, clients, a lot of divorced friends in the, in the industry, not clients, but divorced. Uh, and I know that they're going through a bad time. And they had to show up at a wedding when they're having a nasty divorce custody battle to show up at a wedding. And I know many of them want to say, don't do it, don't do it. It's going to end poorly. We all have a life that gets in our way. But on this particular day, at this particular wedding, no matter how hard I worked, no matter if I could have shot the best photos of my career, every time that couple looked at the photos, they might not have thought it, but they knew it was brought up. But every time the parents looked at it, they would have been thinking about the gay photographer and they would have said oh the photographer was gay or I was going to miss something because I was gay or I couldn't take something she even brought up the fact you know how are you going to be in the room for getting ready photos and of course as I always say most of my brides would rather have me in there than some guy and no offense to my guys with cameras um, I love y'all but most women would rather have another woman photograph them. And, and it is funny because most people say, I'm not in there when you're butt naked, people. So I, I don't know what photographers you're working with. And I do not sell myself as a boudoir photographer. It's not my forte. I will hook you up with somebody that does wonderful work like that. Um, so I'm not in those rooms during those situations, but I'm still professional and I know how to do it and how to act. And I'm going to be honest with you, we're 2019 and I think even a gay person sitting in a room with somebody by themselves or a straight person sitting in somebody in a room by themselves there's just so many things that can go wrong sadly um gone are the days that we could just do and be and wonder like we wanted to wander around um now you can't do that as much um because there's always somebody watching or something's going to be taken out of context but this bride was not worried about me being in the room nor has any other bride in my 37 years this is the first time it has come up in 37 years, guys, 37 years, nobody's ever said to me, well, what are you going to do if Bobby's in the room? Bobby can step out just like all the guys step out. Um, and she, and they, and she even said, I would rather have a girl in here photographing me than some guy I don't know. And the groom was all over it. So I don't want to be the asterisk on their wedding day. Um, so it's hard to have to say no, but literally the way things work and how they work and how the universe is, um, is all designed. Not two days later, I get a call, a phone call, and the woman's checking the availability for a date. It's a second marriage. And she proceeded to tell me that they spent a lot of money in their first two marriages and that this isn't about the money and that they weren't really going to have photos this time because obviously you photographed the first one and it didn't turn out well and you don't use those photos. We all hear that as wedding vendors. But she said everybody, a few people in the area recommended me and said, I do pictures a little bit different. Um, I tell a story and I, it won't be all these posy posies and, and that I believe in the power of photography. And they even told this potential bride, she talks about how the pictures aren't for you, that, that Bobby talks about how the pictures are for your kids and they have two kids and how it's their generation and it's for them to show their kids. And she says, then I clicked over to your website after I looked at Instagram and I, I do love your photos. But the first thing I saw is that you welcomed everybody that you didn't care what gender they were, who they were, how they loved. And she says, as a middle-aged heter heterosexual woman, that spoke volumes to me because I want to teach my children that no matter who you are, you can love whoever you want to love. And should either of my children come to me and say that they're gay, I want them to know that I love them. So I want to work with somebody who understands that love is love and love is unconditional. So they're... The same message on my website did two separate things. And we're going to talk about that a little bit when we want to help you talk about how to better serve your LGBTQ um, community couples. So that's where we are, guys. It's 2019, and I, as a gay vendor, still have the battles of either I'm too gay or I'm not gay enough or I'm not straight um, and I must see life differently through my camera or through my eyes. Um, and that is so not true. And I want to be accepted in this wedding industry like all couples want to be accepted. I want to work with everybody. I want us all to be on the same page. I want us to together elevate, educate, and motivate each other. 
I want to inspire you as much as you inspire me. I want to be that person that you say, hey my gosh, Bobby, if I knew a gay lesbian person was as cool and fab as you, I would have liked gay people a long time ago. Tina and I love being that couple when people say, my gosh, had I known gay couples were this great years ago and that you're just like us, we would have been friendlier with our old gay neighbors or we would have reached out to the lesbians who lived across the hall. We want to be those people. But we are not those people just because we're gay or lesbian. We are those people because we're human beings and kindness matters and treating everybody with respect matters. That is how we do things here at BBP. And to me, that is what pride is. I take pride in who I am. I take pride in who I love. I take pride in supporting everybody. I will fight, fight, fight. I have lived through so many people passing away. I have lived through so many people killing themselves because they're not accepted. And I can tell you, gay weddings are so, so beautiful. And and I may be biased here, but the struggles and the fights that most couples have had to get to, to get to the altar, when there's no family person standing around to welcome them. We in the gay community often have to choose our families. Um, Many of our families have kicked us out years ago, hence so many people in our community Um, take their own lives because they don't feel welcomed or loved. And I can tell you that at a gay wedding, when all the friends are there, the ones that are in the same boat, the ones that struggle with you and fight with you and love hard with you and want to celebrate you, these gay weddings are so, so moving. They still want to dance with their mothers. They want to dance with their fathers. And the weddings that we have been blessed to be a part of where there is family there, I literally cry. I cry at every father-daughter dance regardless, but on these weddings, they're so moving. And when I hear these parents stand up and say how proud they are of their kids, it makes me sad for the ones that have no parents to stand up and say anything for. They're marrying the love of their lives on this special day, and there's not one person from their family there to support them. Everybody's story going to the altar is different. Every wedding vendor's story and why they're in the industry is different. I really want to fight hard and work hard to have inclusion, not just for engaged couples, but for the wedding industry in general to be more accepting and open to all of us. Um, I want us to be a community that race doesn't matter, sexual orientation doesn't matter, that we're all creative entrepreneurs, all working together to be better, that we are all fabo regardless of who we are and who we love and the color of our skin or what church we go to worship in. I want the industry to continue to be a blessing to everybody and the privilege that we have every single weekend to be a part of everybody's stories. It's such a privilege and honor and what we do every weekend matters. We play an important role. We come to these couples as strangers. They trust us with what our expertise and what we know how to do. Gay couples will fall in love with you if you just give them the opportunity to know you. Trust me as a gay vendor, I'm going to respect you even more possibly than you've ever been respected if you just treat me as your equal. Yell at me if I do something wrong. Crack me in the back of the head if I do something wrong. But also don't be afraid to praise me for showing up and giving you 100% and being a wedding day team player. That's what this community is. That's what this community does for me. And I celebrate pride with you. And I thank all of you who are accepting to myself and Tina, who support the couples that we bring to you. And those of you that simply reach out to ask me more questions and ask how I can help you and that you want to be part of the gay community, that you want to accept all and be open to all. So I thank you all for celebrating pride. But I want you to celebrate pride 12 months a year. I want you to sometimes turn your logos and your brands to rainbow just because. Thank you all for showing same-sex couples this month. Thank you all for being part of the same-sex education and inclusion. And let's all work together to have every couple represented across the industry. Let these couples see themselves saying I do. And wedding vendors, let's welcome each other with open arms and let's accept more gay and lesbian transgender wedding pros into our industry and in our community together 
we can all be better. Together we can be fabo. And the more we know and the more we get to know each other and we share our stories, the better off we're going to be. So that's what pride is to me. Pride is speaking my voice and continuing to fight hard and to have all you allies coming along with me and to have all the support and to understand that we can do better as a community and we can better serve our LGBTQ plus community, our African-American community, our Indian community, our Muslim community, our Jewish community. We are in the industry of celebrating everybody's love story. So let's continue to do that. Stonewall 50 happened for a reason. And we are the reason. We are the results of all those fights. This is not a gay issue or a straight issue. And I love being a champion and a cheerleader for everybody in the industry. And I want you all to continue supporting me with my voice and in my voice. And for me being authentically honest and helping each of us succeed. By whatever your definition of the word success is, I'm here to help you do that. And I'm here to be a champion, to be a love champion, to be a marriage champion, to just cheer you guys on to succeed in every way possible. So I thank you for listening and I thank you for asking about pride. We're going to stop this episode right now and I'm going to come back with a with another grouping. Um, y'all sent me about 25, 30 questions. So I'm going to do my best to answer them. But I wanted to have this be a pride episode about what it's like to be a gay vendor in the wedding industry and maybe just enlighten a little bit on it that we have a long way to go there too. So thanks for hanging with me. You're all our fabo. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. So hang on. We're going to cut this off for a little bit. Then we're going to come back and I'm going to hit you up with the questions. So thanks everybody for being fabo and celebrate pride every single day. Raise that rainbow flag because love is love is love. No matter who you love or how you love or how you got here. Be blessed that you're in an industry that gets to celebrate somebody starting happily ever after. Thank you so much for listening. There it is. Y'all asked me for a Pride episode. I gave you a Pride episode using my voice and my point of view. Um, I always, always am uh, standing in my truth and living an authentic life and being accepting and kind to all. So I wanted to just gently nudge everybody And while we all celebrate Pride this month and we're all always looking to better serve our LGBTQ plus couples, I wanted everybody to just take a moment and remember that there's a lot of us in the gay community that are working alongside you and with you to better serve all couples. That being said, we're going to come back with a bonus episode on Friday. Y'all gave me really, really good questions and I want to give you the time to uh, hear the answers and I want to devote enough time to those answers. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your questions. Go celebrate. Pride weekend is a lot of places this weekend. So go out, show your colors, show yourself, be yourself and be true to you. And above all, keep being fabo. See y'all on Friday. Thanks for joining us. We hope these conversations will take you into your wedding weekend with a little more confidence proud of what you do, and how you serve your clients. Maybe you even picked up a business tip or two. Till next time, be fabulous.